that sound. It's all up in my face. All right. I'm Jay Gurguski. I'm a release engineer within Red Hat, and I want to talk to you about, or just kind of socialize the fact that you can build disk images in Koji. Um, but before going too far into that, I have to ask a question. Who here does not work at Red Hat? Is there anybody? Okay. Do you guys recognize this interface? Do you know what that is? That's the Koji build system. That's what we use to build packages in Fedora. I'm going to show you something now, and it's kind of a secret, but don't worry about it. Whoops. If I can click, hang on. I'm not very coordinated with a mic and that. Anyway, that's the internal Koji build system we use at Red Hat. It's the same system, it just has a nicer skin. Okay? Arguably a nicer skin, yeah, true. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to kind of cruise along here and simulate clicks because I didn't trust the network while I was putting this together, um, while I was sitting in the audience. So if I click on tasks, right, you get this option to pick different types of methods in here. And near the bottom, there's a new one called image. Right, so if I click on that, you get a list of tasks that are, called, that are image tasks. And what we're doing here, this is what is building um, disk images in Brew. Brew is the same thing as Koji. That's just what we call it internally. I'm going to accidentally call it that a lot. Um, if we keep clicking and hit like a successful build, you get this kind of interface. Here are the parameters and the options uh, that were used to construct the thing. Um, what we're doing under the covers is we're spawning a guest and then running an automated anaconda installation inside of it. And that is how you end up with your disk image at the end. What we're using to orchestrate that is a tool called Oz, written by Crystal Lancet, and a tool written by Ian, or maintained by Ian McLeod, who's sitting in the audience in front of you. Brew is basically just calling out to that to orchestrate this. It has to be automated, um, basically through Kickstart. Um, if it stops or gets, if you get prompted for any questions or anything like that during the process, your build will fail. Um, because you can't get to like a VNC session or anything like that to mess with it and answer questions while you're in there, okay? Um, if you look at the, can you see this okay? Can you see build? Good. Um, well, I just want to make sure you can see it because I don't know the font size, but um, you'll notice it looks very familiar. It has a name version release just like an RPM does. In images, that doesn't really make a tremendous amount of sense because you can just rename them the way you want, but in the uh, Koji database, we still use a name version release and an architecture um, the same way that we do with RPMs. So when you build an image in Brew, you give it a name version release, and it's still guaranteed to be, well, in the database, it's guaranteed to be unique. Once you take it out of there, you can rename it and do whatever you want, although internally we kind of discourage that generally. Um, we don't really have a good way, like with RPMs, you have that header that kind of maintains all the information about it, even if you rename the file. But with images, we don't have that. Um, if you click a little further down and hit either of these links down here, um, this is where you can get to the actually the, the interesting stuff. Like down here at the bottom, here's the kickstarts that were used. Um, here, the QCOW2 is, is the image itself. Um, there's a couple of different, like half a dozen different formats that we for more, uh, support, like um, VMDKs for vSphere, uh, OVA, which is used for Rev and for um, cloud forms. Um, just plain compressed QCOW and also raw disk images, which is what we use for EC2 when you want to upload to EC2. Uh, this here is what the build page looks like. So you've got your download information here. You've got your build logs over here, which is basically just the spew from Oz and Image Factory. Um, and the libvirt XML and the, the TDL, which is a piece of information that's passed down to Image Factory to kind of orchestrate all of this. Um, so that's when things are working and things look great. Um, this is always kind of a depressing query. If I hit the tasks that fail, um, I get this list here. Um, and this isn't just limited to me. This is all other people within the company too. Um, this is a failed one for OpenShift. Um, so you can see we got a whole bunch of red links here. Um, I'm sorry, it's not OpenShift. It's uh, the guest image for RHEL 7. Whoops, uh, don't look too carefully at that, whatever. Um, <laughs> right, yep, it'll be used for OpenStack. Um, so this one failed, so if we click on the, the failed subtask and get a little further down here, um, you can get to, um, what you want to look at is here, you have the results here. This indicates, uh-oh, no disk activity for 300 seconds. That's what's actually being run, um, or that's how we check to see if something succeeded. Um, Image Factory kind of polls regularly, and Ian can speak a little bit more to this, um, polls regularly to see if there's still disk activity, to see if the Anaconda installation is performing. And if it's not, then it fails. Um, and it spits up a screenshot at you too, which I can show, show here. Hopefully that's coming through. So at this point, Anaconda prompted because it had a question, and now you're hosed, right, because you can't get to the thing to make a change. So, this is kind of the best we can do when, when something fails, so you just have to kind of understand what, the, what Anaconda's failure case is. Um, and then modify your kickstart to accommodate that, or modify the repo you're pulling RPMs from to accommodate that. 
Um, you can also look at the log file as well. Um, I don't have a very good example of that. Um, but the log file will sometimes indicate what, what was missing or what failed to, why the guest failed to spawn or something like that. Um, what I want to show you a little bit was like what some of these options mean here. Um, if we, so they're all preserved here in Brew to look at, but they're not particularly intuitive. Um, the kickstart one kind of makes sense, right, because you have to give it a kickstart. Um, disk size, if you request an image, if your kickstart has the partitioning information in it and you're asking for something that's bigger than 10 gigs, then you have to tell Brew, or Koji rather, to build or to present a larger virtual device for it to install on. Um, at some point, it'll be a little bit smarter and look at the kickstart file and say, oh, you're asking for 16 gigs worth of information or 30 or whatever and just provision that as needed, but it doesn't do that yet. Smaller just works. Yeah, you don't need to worry about that. Um, so if we look, here's a shell window. This is on, uh, moments ago I was on the VPN and I was um, shelled into my workstation at, at work um, where I'm working on this stuff. Um, this isn't, uh, the reason I'm showing Brew all the time and not Fedora Koji is because it hasn't been released yet. Um, we deployed it to production uh, a month or two ago and we've been working on it. Um, the reason it's not released is not because I'm evil and it's not because I'm writing proprietary code and it's not because I'm trying to keep secrets. Um, it's because I just haven't coordinated with Fedora RelEng yet to do it. That's all. <laughs> It'll be there like within a month, I'm assuming. Um, I don't think there's anything really that's holding them back. Um, there, right, right, yep. Um, so some of the, I wanted to get to some of the options here. So there's disk size that I was showing you or marking before. Um, some of these other things, if you've done RPM builds, you maybe have seen them before, like no wait, no, uh, no, uh, no progress, that kind of thing. Kickstart is the, or, sorry, Kickstart is the important one. Um, distro is how you tell it what type of anaconda you're going to be installing with. Um, you can use, um, so this is why I'm showing the dev one, because we don't, the internal brew one doesn't support CentOS or scientific Linux, but the, but I'm adding that support um, in my work right now. Um, so you can specify Fedora, you know, Fedora 20, Fedora 21, and it will understand how to get that information. Um, you can create scratch images, um, just like you can create scratch RPMs. Um, the format one was what I was, um, is an interesting one that I wanted to point out. So here's the complete list of different image types you can uh, build. VMDKs for vSphere, QCow, QCow2, VDIs, um, the OVAs that I described before for RevM or uh, Cloud Forms. Fedora probably doesn't care most of, about most of those. Um, maybe just QCow and RAW is what it cares about. Um, and also Docker, and that's another reason why I wanted to show this internal code is because I'm writing Docker support in Koji and Brew right now too. So that won't be far away. Um, the whole command, so normally you would see like Koji image build, blah, 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 and you would put the whole command out. The whole thing is actually kind of ugly because um, you have to give it the name, version, release, um, the, the Koji target, the install tree URL where you're going to get the an anaconda bits, architectures, potentially external repos if you're pulling from other, like your own local work, if you want to build an image that has your stuff in there, um, that sort of thing. Um, so it actually gets kind of messy. So in future work, what I'm gonna do is just allow a configuration file and you can just pass that on, a con on the command line and then you're good to go. So you won't have to have like a four line mess of command line options anymore because I understand that's obnoxious. Um, and that's pretty much it. That was my talk. So does anybody have any questions about that? Sure. Um, I'm expect, so I have to work with Dennis and find out what his timeline is, um, but I'm expecting it to be within a month. Um, I know Co uh, Fedora is interested in the Docker support, so I think that's actually what they're gating on. And once I have that written, then I'll hand it off to Dennis and then that'll get deployed and away we go. Okay, that might take some work, but sure. <laughs> what else, anything? So the, to actually use this stuff, you need the image permission in Koji, and that can be granted to you by either myself, if you're working internally, or um, Dennis Gilmore, who is Fedora Release Engineering. Um, and the reason that, that permission exists is just so that people can't spam the system, um, or like the whole you know, community can't spam the system and suddenly saturate their drives. Yes, yeah, you do have network access inside the guest, yep. You, if you don't have the permissions, you can't build anything. You can't build any RPM or any images at all. Um, so you can't just take, you can't just go to Koji right now and or Fedora Koji and just try to build an image yourself. You have to have that permission. Yeah. Um, once you once you have the permission, if you build a scratch image, you can include pretty much anything you want in it. Um, 
if you if it's not a scratch image though, then Koji will go through and actually check to make sure every single RPM that's in there is actually installed or it was built in the Koji build system. So you're not allowed to build non-scratch images um, with external stuff like RPM fusion or something like that. You can't just bring that stuff in there. That way we always know Fedora non-scratch images are Fedora images. And I'm out of time. So thank you very much for, for uh, your attention.